Hello, my friends, and happy Tuesday. It's your friend, Victoria, the Manager of Community and Media Relations for the Fayetteville Woodpeckers. I hope y'all are having a wonderful day. It's two o'clock, so y'all know what it means. That means that it is story time at home with the Fayetteville Woodpeckers. I hope all of you are doing wonderful and that your families are safe and well and enjoying entering into stage two of reopening North Carolina. For all of our fans and friends who are outside of North Carolina, I hope that you guys are all safe and well. And thank you for joining Joining us. I see everybody coming. Hello. I'm sending waves out to everybody. <laughs> We've had a very busy day with the Fayetteville Woodpeckers. As you all know, only essential workers are going in and out of the stadium. There's a lot of work that's happening right now in the plaza up ahead of our stadium. So it's going to be absolutely beautiful. The asphalt has been laid leading up from Hay Street to the front steps and gates of Segra Stadium. So y'all are going to have a beautiful place to walk up to the gates when we open them, hopefully very, very soon so that we can all be together and enjoy being Woodpeckers Nation once again. So in honor of today's story time, did you guys enjoy last week? I know you did because our general manager David Lane did such a fantastic job reading to you one of his little boy's favorites and I love it whenever we get to meet new members of our staff and introduce you guys to them with story time because we really are blessed to have the best front office staff in the nation. I know I'm biased but I think I'm right. So today, I'm going to read to you another classic that I think that you guys might have heard of. It was certainly one that I frequently read when I was smaller, but it really taught me and reminded me that it's really important to love your toys. So I think you might know what I'm talking about. The Velveteen Rabbit. Give me a like or a wave or a heart if you've read this one before. Okay, I'm seeing some very good. Okay, so this is from my Treasury of Fairy Tales book and it has some beautiful illustrations. So if you're ready to go, let's put on those listening ears. Let's sit crisscross applesauce and let's do our very best and let's read together. So here we go. The Velveteen Rabbit. One Christmas morning, a boy named John found a velveteen rabbit in his stocking. John loved the rabbit at once. He hugged him close, rubbed his brown and white fur, and felt his cuddly softness. Then John set the rabbit on his toy shelf. The velveteen rabbit was surprised at all the company he had in the nursery. There were a wooden, so wooden lion on wheels, a troop of metal toy soldiers, mechanical boats, a family of clowns, and a large, worn rocking horse. But he was still lonely because the other toys paid him no attention. Only the rocking horse was kind to the velveteen rabbit. He talked gently to him every day and seemed to be very wise. So there he is, Christmas morning with his new friend, John. You seem so real, the rabbit told the horse one day. John loves you so much. He hugs you and rides you and seems so happy. I am very nearly real, said the horse carefully. You can be real too, if John loves you enough. When he has loved you so much that patches of your fur are worn off and you have become faded and shabby, then you may be real too. The Velveteen Rabbit did not like the idea of being shabby, but he did want to be real. John seemed to have forgotten the Velveteen Rabbit, but every day he rode the horse. He hugged and petted and loved him until the horse was real and jumped out of the nursery window. One night, John was restless 
and couldn't go to sleep. He kept begging his mother for one more story. I've had a few nights like that. Finally, she picked up the velveteen rabbit from the shelf and said, here, take your toy. He will help you to sleep. John hugged the soft rabbit close and fell asleep. After that, the velveteen rabbit always slept in the warm bed with John and he was no longer lonely. Sometimes John squeezed him so tightly the rabbit could barely breathe. John talked to him and made him tunnels under the covers like burrows that real rabbits lived in. The velveteen rabbit liked that and wondered if he would ever become real. Time passed and the rabbit did not notice how his beautiful velveteen fur had become worn in spots. His tail was loose and all the pink was worn off of his nose where John had kissed him. Spring came then summer. John took the rabbit outside to play in the grass and the sandbox. The sand made the rabbit's fur more drab and shabby than ever. Under the, but once, ah, let me back up, here we go. Once the boy forgot and left the velveteen rabbit under the zinnia row in the garden, his father had to search the garden with his flashlight until he found the rabbit because John could not go to sleep without him. My, my, said his father, such fuss over a toy. John clasped the warm rabbit tightly. He isn't a toy, he said. He's real. The velveteen rabbit heard this and he snuggled close to John with joy in his heart. One moment, or one morning, John was feeling ill. When the velveteen rabbit laid close to him, he could feel how hot the boy's skin was. John talked in his sleep, and strange people came in and out of the nursery. The velveteen rabbit crept into the burrows of the bedding and stayed hidden, but close to John. He knew John needed him now. It was a long, sad time. John was too ill to play with the velveteen rabbit, but the shabby little toy remembered all their happy times together and laid close by. Finally, the fever went away. John sat up in bed and cuddled the velveteen rabbit once again. His mother and father came into the room with a strange man they called the doctor. He can get up now, said the doctor, and you should clean and spray the room for germs. That sounds about like what we're going through now, isn't it? Get the Lysol. And get rid of that stuffed animal, he ordered. It's a mass of germs. Get John a new one. The velveteen rabbit could not believe what he had heard. He was real. The boy said so. But still, it happened. The velveteen rabbit was picked up, carried out, and tossed onto the rubbish heap with old picture books and broken toys. Oh no, what does this mean for the velveteen rabbit? The velveteen rabbit was frightened and cold. Did John know he was here? He tried to call out, but he didn't know how. He remembered once in the nursery when a toy soldier had rusted until his head fell off. John's mother had carried the soldier away. Had she brought him here to the trash heap? The velveteen rabbit looked around and discovered what remained of the toy soldier. Well, at least it had not disappeared altogether. He lay still and shivered a little. A big tear rolled down his cheek, off his chin, and into the grass at the edge of the rubbish heap. This is making me sad. Suddenly, the tear glowed 
The Velveteen Rabbit watched it as a light began to glow all around the tear. Then a lovely fairy stood in the center of the light. Dear Rabbit, she said, I am the nursery fairy. I have come to make you real. But I already am real, whispered the rabbit. You were real to John because he loved you so much, said the fairy. Now, because you have been so kind to the boy and because you have wept, I will make you truly real. The fairy lifted the shabby worn rabbit in her arms and flew into the forest. There she kissed him and set him down on a grassy knoll. The Velveteen Rabbit saw a ring of real rabbits staring at him. Then they began to dance around him and wonder of wonders. The Velveteen Rabbit moved on real legs with real paws and he wrinkled his real pink nose. Winter passed and spring. One summer day, John was again playing in his sandbox when a small brown and white rabbit crept out of the forest and stood quite still for what seemed like a long time. The rabbit watched the boy who had helped him become real. He felt both happy and sad. Then the rabbit turned on his hind legs and hopped back into the forest to return to his new life. The end. I love that story. I don't know about you, but there are some of my toys that were very, very special to me that I have saved so that hopefully in the future, whenever I have children, I can pass them down to them. So always, always, always love on your toys because who knows? They might just become real like the Velveteen Rabbit. And what's real to us right now is how much we miss each and every one of you. Thank you for all of the support that you have been sharing with the Fayetteville Woodpeckers. We hope you've been enjoying the content that we've been putting out. Continue to support us through our retail store and through all of the different opportunities that we're going to be coming live very soon. So make sure that you stay Locked in with the Fayetteville Woodpecker social media. Watch us for updates. Turn on the notifications on your phone. And boys and girls, we're going to continue doing story time just as long as you want to. So if you have a favorite story or a favorite book that you would like for us to read on story time at home with the Woodpeckers, make sure that your mom and dad DMs us, direct messages us, or private messages us on our social media so that we can read read what you guys want to hear. So we can't wait to see what some of your favorite stories are. I hope you've been enjoying the ones that we have been choosing so far, but thank you for your support and we'll look forward to seeing you next Tuesday at two o'clock right here on Facebook and Instagram for the Fayetteville Woodpeckers. Go Woodpeckers! Have a great week, guys.